In the previous video, we visualized the complete filtering recursions in single object tracking, and we decomposed the posterior density into one term for every possible sequence of associations. Also, each term was a product of a density that we already know how to compute, and a weight, which was the probability of the data association sequence. Overall, it may seem that we are close to deriving the complete filtering recursion, since it only remains to derive an expression for the probabilities of the different data association sequences. Still, in the derivations that we are about to perform, we will initially ignore the decomposition, and instead start from first principles, and use the chapman colmer warwe equation for the prediction step, and Bayes' rule for the update step. In the end, we will still arrive at the same decomposition, but with detailed expressions for both the densities and the weights in each term. Due to the unknown data associations, the tricky part in single object tracking is the measurement update. We therefore start by dedicating several videos to the update step before we put it all together into a complete solution. To derive the update equations, we recall the expression for the measurement likelihood, which contains mk plus 1 terms. For now, we ignore the details in the expressions for the individual terms and simply write the likelihood as a sum over theta k from 0 to mk. To simplify notation, we remove the time index from the variables. But please recall that z are the measurements at a single time instance, and that theta are the corresponding data association hypotheses. Suppose that we have a prior p of x and want to compute the posterior of x given z. The prior p of x represents the distribution of x before observing z. In a filtering setting, this prior is normally the predicted density, since that is the distribution of x before observing the new measurements. The updated density is proportional to the prior times the likelihood. Plugging in the expression for the likelihood, we find that the posterior is proportional to the summation over theta of this product. To find the posterior, we need to figure out how to normalize this summation in order to find the proportionality constant. Like in the previous video, it would also be nice if it could decompose into PDFs and weights that are convenient to compute, for instance using the comma filter. The objective in this video is to learn a few tricks that enable us to write the posterior as a summation over theta of the following terms. Three things are important to note here. First, we now have an equality between the posterior and the summation, instead of a proportionality sign, which is a good thing. Second, the weight w theta is a probability mass function as a function of theta, which means that it is non-negative and sums to 1. Third, p theta of x is a probability density function as a function of x, which means that it is non-negative and integrates to 1. We will see in the next video that the way we compute these variables, w theta is the probability of the data association theta, and p theta of x is the posterior of x given that theta is the true data association. The tricks that we present in this video are useful in various different contexts. In particular, you may recall the general idea of using the law of total probability to introduce variables that can help us express a distribution more easily. In many cases, that technique gives us a posterior density written as a sum over unnormalized functions, and we can then use tricks from this video to obtain a nice expression for the posterior. To present these principles or tricks, we omit k, z, and m, with the ambition to highlight that the techniques in this video are general. Suppose we have a density p of x, which is proportional to a function g of x, which is the sum of m plus 1 non-negative functions g theta. For instance, in this example, g of x is the sum of g0 of x and g1 of x, where the integral of g0 is 3 and the integral over g1 is 2. A technical detail is that we need these functions to have finite integrals, and at least one of them needs to have a positive integral, in order for us to be able to normalize g. Now, what we would like to do is to express p of x as a mixture of PDFs, that is, as a sum over w0 p0 of x, plus w1 p1 of x, and so on, until wm pm of x. In the example, the solution we are looking for looks like follows where p0 is a normalized version of g0, p1 is a normalized version of g1, and p of x, which is a weighted sum of p0 and p1, is a normalized version of g. 
all three functions are PDFs, and the normalization is selected such that they integrate to one. In the next few slides, we will elaborate on this solution and demonstrate how to obtain the correct weights. Let us start with the basic problem of normalizing a function g of x to obtain a density p of x. If p of x is proportional to g of x, then there is a proportionality constant c, such that p of x is c times g of x. To find p of x, we simply need to identify c. To do this, we can use the fact that densities always integrate to 1. It therefore holds that 1 is equal to the integral of p of x. If p is c times g, it therefore holds that 1 is c times the integral of g. And we use this to figure out that c is 1 over the integral of g. The conclusion from this is that p of x is g of x divided by the integral of g. This is a very basic result that you should know about, and we actually already made use of it to express the spatial PDF of a Poisson point process. In the example, g of x has the integral of 5, and p of x is therefore g of x divided by 5, and it's easy to see that this has the integral of 1. We've seen how to normalize a single function. However, we have a sum of functions, g theta of x, that we want to express as a weighted sum of PDFs. We therefore want to identify PDFs for every theta without changing the total sum. And there's a nice trick that enables us to do this. Suppose w tilde theta denotes the integral of g theta of x, and let p theta of x be a PDF, which is g theta divided by w tilde theta. We can then factorize g theta of x into a constant, w tilde, times a PDF p theta of x where you can see that the constant w tilde cancels out if we plug in the expression for p theta of x. This may look like an insignificant result, but it's actually very useful in various contexts. We have illustrated this result in the figure to the right, where we have expressed g0, which has the integral 3, as 3 times the density p0 of x, which is the normalized version of g0 of x. If we plug this into the expression for g of x, we find that p of x is proportional to some of these products w tilde theta times p theta of x. We have illustrated this in our example, where we get that g is 3 times p0 plus 2 times p1, since g0 had the integral 3 and g1 had the integral 2. We are already close to obtaining the desired result. All we have to do now is to normalize the weights such that the entire function becomes a PDF. The purpose with this slide is to prove that normalizing the weights is the right thing to do in order to obtain the density p of x. The math for doing this may look slightly involved, even though the final result is simple. From previous slides, we know that since p of x is proportional to g of x, p of x is g of x divided by the integral of g of x. We also know that g of x can be written as a sum over theta of w tilde theta times p theta of x, where w tilde theta and p theta are defined as follows. So what is the factor needed to normalize g? Well, it is the integral of g, which is the sum over the integrals of g theta, where the integral of g theta is w tilde theta. So the normalization factor is the sum over w tilde theta. It therefore turns out that to normalize g of x, it is sufficient to normalize the weights w tilde. To see this, let w theta denote the normalized weights, where we have divided w tilde theta by the sum over w tilde theta. Note that this is analogous to how we normalize g of x, but instead of normalizing the function by dividing by its integral, we normalize this discrete function by dividing by its sum. This ensures that w theta sums to 1, which means that w theta is a probability mass function. Given that the integral over g is the sum over w tilde theta, we get that p of x is g of x divided by the sum over w tilde, where g is the sum over w tilde theta times p theta of x. We can now see that we obtain the desired result, namely that p of x is the sum over w theta times p theta, where w theta is a PMF and p theta is a PDF. Also, the conclusion from this slide is simply that normalizing the weights was the right thing to do. We can illustrate this result using our example. We previously found that g is 3 times p0 plus 2 times p1. To find p, all we had to do was to normalize the weights. 
in this case, the weights summed to five, and we obtain the normalized weights by dividing the unnormalized weights by five, which gives us that P of X is 0 0.6 times P0 of X plus 0 0.4 times P1 of X. Let us summarize the results that we have obtained. A compact way to express the final result is that if P of X is proportional to sum over G theta of X, we can write P of X as a sum over W theta times P theta of X. To do this, we set P theta of X to be the normalized version of G theta of X and W theta to be a normalized version of the integral over G theta of X. Note that we view the integral over G theta of X as a function of theta. For instance, in our example, this function took the value three for theta equals zero and the value two for theta equals one. Normalizing this function gives us a function that takes the value 0 0.6 for theta equals zero and 0 0.4 for theta equals one. The detailed equations for how to normalize the densities and weights are given here.